truth. Is it just me or am I the only person who's getting really sick and tired of hearing all of these free speech advocates claiming to be for free speech but then completely shatter that principle when it becomes convenient? In this case, I'm talking directly about Ricky Doolan from British Lives Matter. Now, you may be wondering who's British Lives Matter or even Ricky Doolan. British Lives Matter is a fairly new channel that just came out on YouTube round about just after the whole George Floyd slash Black Lives Matter movement that just happened. Of course, he's one of those channels like Tommy Robinson, Sargon of Akkad and all of that. These Civ Nats, if you will. Of course, making points about inclusive patriotism, I, I think that, that, that's what they're calling it, or something like that along those lines. Again, a complete free speech advocate criticizing the big tech, censoring and deep platforming people who have the same opinions that they do, making the same talking points about, say, mass migration and the SJWs and whatnot. Well, recently, he had a debate with a certain woman from Patriotic Alternative by the name of Laura Towler. I've watched that debate, like many others, and to be honest with you, Laura Towler completely demolished him in that debate. He made himself look like a complete cuck. He danced around the questions that she asked him. He completely smeared her and Mark Collette and the rest of the patriotic alternative movement. Overall, he just made himself look like a complete twat. So ever since that debate, people were, of course, making fun of him. There was somewhat memes about him after that, even to the point of making videos, criticizing or, again, making fun of him because of that debate. One example of the, well, I believe two, but the one example that I do know that happened towards was a YouTuber by the name of No Chance. He made a video using the footage from the debate Again, in a, in a mocking or satirical terms with that, which is fully protected under fair use and all of that, and there's a reason why I say that, and I'll get to that in just a second. The point is, he made a video about the, the debate and making fun of Ricky Dooland and the rest of British Lives Matter. Well, of course, Ricky did not like that. So much so, he took down the video and claimed it was copyright infringement. So basically, he made a false copyright strike, which... From my recollection, I think that goes against the terms of service of YouTube, but you know, what do I know, right? But that is just complete bullshit. The fact that he went such a length to try and fucking take down a video because it hurt his feelings and of course it made him look bad. No one else has to do that for you, Ricky. You've already did that to your fucking self. And again, so much for you being a fucking free speech advocate, right? So, of course, a lot of people were not happy with him that he did this, even to the point where Laura Towler herself asked him, hey, what's this about? Why are you taking down videos on their channels? Could you maybe remove the strikes and let them have their videos back? You know what Ricky fucking responded back with? With this tweet right here, let me show you. It's in response to like what he said to her about the videos being taken down falsely. So her tweet writes, I've just spoken to Ricky Doolan from British Lives Matter about him. Everybody's videos taken down from YouTube. He said this. This is a quote from Ricky himself. Tell all your friends they're all going to get strikes unless they remove them themselves. What an absolute fucking pussy. Again, this guy is one of those free speech advocates, by the way. I want to remind you all of that. And here he is taking down videos because they mock him or criticize him. Kind of reminds me of another particular YouTuber I've talked about before, but, uh, you know, that's it. But, mm, I've already mentioned about that, that twat before. But anyway, the, the point here is I'm just getting really sick and tired of these fucking free speech advocates, these, these, these defenders of, you know, these freedom fighters on the internet, these defenders of free speech. Of course, someone like Ricky Doolan or anyone from his camp gets taken down. It's horrible. It's deplorable. They're getting deplatformed and censored by big tech. All, their videos fall under the case of free speech and all of that. But then when it's revealed that someone from maybe more further to the right than they are, suddenly it becomes, oh, well, free speech is very nuanced. I mean, these are private corporations they can or private companies. They can do whatever the hell they want. But if it's someone from their camp gets the platform or censor, then it's, it's like the biggest fucking travesty ever. Now, look. I don't want anybody to be deplatformed. I don't want Ricky Doolan to be deplatformed. I don't want Laura Tower or Mark Collette to be deplatformed. I don't want anybody to be, to be deplatformed. If you're someone on YouTube or BitChute or anything like that at all, you make videos on a, on a regular basis, especially if they're politically based, regardless of where you stand politically, 
as long as you don't promote violence or anything like that at all, again, I'm not saying they are, I'm just trying to make a point here, they should make videos whenever they want to. And I think any form of deplatforming or censorship is horrible and wrong and, and should be completely condemned with that. Now, with all that being said, Ricky Doland is a fucking hypocrite. Not only is he a hypocrite, but I think there is an argument to be made that he is a complete grifter. Because again, I, and I know it sounds like I'm repeating myself here, but it's just this is not scripted. I just want to get this out and done with because this is something that's been bothering me for a long fucking while now. But the fact that Ricky is this free speech absolutist or free speech advocate, if you will, and then completely f falsely copyright strikes someone's video, like in this case, No Chance's video, simply because he made fun of them or criticized them. I mean, for fuck's sake, Laura fucking said it best. If you're going to make videos about politics, you better have thick fucking skin because if you're... If you're going to come into this world of YouTube making these kinds of videos and you can't handle the criticism, then get the fuck out. This is clearly not for you in this case. I mean, this this is just fucking... I've had it with these fucking people, these Sivnats or liberalists or whatever the fuck you want to call them. These types of people, again, who are all for free speech and then completely diminish that principle when it becomes convenient. You know, it just like happened a few years back with another, um, a very famous individual on on the internet by the name of Jordan Peterson. Everyone knows who Jordan Peterson is. He's the doctor. He's based. He wrote a very f famous book about, you know, basically telling people how to live their fucking lives. Milky, milky, warm and tasty, mommy. Milky, please be hasty. Despite the fact it could be something that people can figure out for themselves, but no, I need a fucking leaf to tell me how to live my own fucking life. Anyway, the reason why I bring up Jordan Peterson as another example besides Ricky Doolin is because he pretty much deplatformed, well not pretty much, he, he deplatformed Faith Goldie. Now Faith Goldie and him were meant to be on a panel together for a convention or like a speaking engagement. I, I, I'm not entirely too sure what exactly it is with that, but it was something along those lines. But he decided to ha have her not be part of the platform or anything like that at all. You want to know why that is? It's because she appeared in a live stream. She wasn't a member. She wasn't even like a panelist or anything like that. She was on a podcast with, with a few far right members as a guest and of course she happened to say the 14 words now again going back to the idea of free speech jordan pearson the guy who denounced the idea of you know using gender terminology and all this and that which again i agree with him on he can't be the type of person to say that while in the next sentence completely deplatform somebody just because of they said the 14 words he shouldn't have her be deplatformed another incident that happened last year going back to mark Collette for a bit is with Tommy Robinson. Now, Tommy Robinson was in prison at the time, but anyway, he was arrested, he went to prison for a bit, and of course people took over his channel for the time being, so that there's more content on the channel while he's away. What then happened was, in June or July last year, there was a video that was uploaded onto the Tommy Robinson channel, and that video was called, How to Burn a Real Nazi. Now, the whole point of the video was meant to be criticizing a woman by the name of Shazia Hobbs, but if you really actually sat down and watched the video, it was mainly criticizing and, of course, smearing Mark Collette all over. Now, it's interesting that they made the video about Mark Collette because there was a point in the video talking about Shazia Hobbs where they bring up the point about Tommy Robinson's website is not a free speech platform, which is pretty hypocritical on their part. Because if this happened to Tommy Robinson on any platform, in this case, probably YouTube or BitChute, they would go fucking ape shit. But if it's someone like Shazia Hobbs or Mark Collette or anyone else for that matter, then they would say, oh, well, free speech is nuanced. You know, like, of course, these are privately owned companies. They could do whatever the fuck they want. It's almost like the same exact fucking talking points that the fucking SJWs often make, right? You know, whenever, like, a right-wing conservative pundit or public figure on YouTube gets deplatformed or censored, those fucking SJWs come out of the woodworks and say, oh, well, that they're a privately owned company. They could do whatever the fuck they want. So why is it that all of these Sivnats are making the same exact points about that? It just it really makes you think, doesn't it? So going back to the main topic at hand with Ricky Doland, I don't know if he ever will watch this video, I doubt it, because again, you know, I'm a very small channel and whatnot, but the fact of the matter is, is that Ricky, you are a fucking pussy, you're an absolute fucking grifter to the highest order, you're basically the British equivalent of Baked Alaska. They go onto the platform, they claim to be something that they're clearly not, and they're just doing it for either for shekels or for the case of providing information for the far left. Now, that may be a claim to make, but there is a reason why I made that claim is because, again, with Battle Laura Tyler again, 
there was this post claimed by Ricky Doolin that was made by Laura Tyler, which turned out to be completely false. Laura never made the message war whatsoever. But what's interesting about that is the tweets were handed out to a, a particular channel or a Twitter account by the name of the Telegram Spy. As of course you can see the thread here on on this image just now with that. So Ricky, again, if you watch this, why are you giving information towards the false information towards the like far left groups? Why is that? That I mean, that's really that's really fucking strange, right? Like, I, I mean, I, I can't. This can't be too much of a coincidence. Like the fact of the matter is that you're that you false flag people's videos, you disable the comments and all this and that. You fucking mock and lampoon people, smearing them and portraying them as if they're as as, as if they're something that they're clearly not. And you're giving fucking information to groups like this Telegram spy or whoever else may be the case. Get the fuck off of this platform, Ricky. And, and I'll even fucking save this. I don't want you to be deplatformed or censored or anything like that at all. But if there's ever were a fucking time that were to happen to you, Ricky, I'll say this. Don't you fucking dare for a second try and come back and, and plea for forgiveness or begging for, for us for help. Because you fucking did this to no chance and, and any and anyone else making fun of you or criticizing you or anything like that at all. If you get the platform censored, you deserve every single fucking bit of it. At Holocaust, the Nazis, Adolf Hitler, Adolf Hitler, Nazi Germany in 1930, anti-Semitic, do, do the Sieg Heil, Nazi, Nazi, Adolf Hitler, Nazism, Nazism, the Jews, the Jews, the Jews, the Jews, the Nazis, the Nazis, the Nazis, the Nazis murdered 8 million Jews. <laughs> Hey there, this is Chief Moody. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like this video, then you know what to do. Hit that like button, comment down below, share this video, and if you're new to the channel, maybe hit that subscribe button and click on the bell icon for more content. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. This is Chief Moody signing out, and I will see you all next time. Take care.